Hey, Happy New Year! Pink, The Who, Kanon, The National, Winwood and Clapton are just some of the artists we're featuring on our expanded 2010 wrap up edition of Rock Peaks. Have you ever invited a stranger to come inside? It's only half past, point of oblivion, hourglass. All right, our first 2010 pick is also one of the most memorable of the year. Now, after uh, disrobing down to pretty much nothing, pop singer Pink then ascended to the ceiling of LA's Staples Center, Cirque du Soleil style, spinning, singing, and wowing an audience of more than 25 million Grammy viewers. The Who's Super Bowl halftime performance in February kicked off a huge blogosphere debate. At issue, whether the performance represented the death of classic rock. Our take? Well, yes, Townsend and Daltrey are two old men playing songs that are more than 40 years old, but as long as Townsend's got use of his upper body, we'll never get tired of him windmilling his way through Won't Get Fooled Again. And incidentally, the 2011 halftime show will feature hip hop stars The Black Eyed Peas, a band with a median age of just 35. The other great sports spectacle of last winter was, of course, the Winter Olympics in Vancouver. Now, us Canadians are still getting over our national embarrassment at the kitsch filled closing ceremonies that featured dancing Mounties, giant inflatable beavers, and flying moose. Those are giant beavers and flying moose. Long may you run, long may you run, although these changes have come. Thankfully, Neil Young's simple solo performance of Long May You Run brought the proceedings back down to earth, reminding us that sometimes the best art comes without a lot of excess packaging. Lady Gaga's smash single, Telephone, was committed to video a few times in 2010, first at the Brit Awards, and then in the amazing video where she and Beyonce go all Thelma and Louise on us. But our favorite take by far was her March appearance on The Jonathan Ross Show. One of all, she killed her boyfriend with a telephone cord, all because he wouldn't stop calling. Lady Gaga. In May, the remastered edition of Exile on Main Street hit the shelves, and over the course of a week that month, Jimmy Fallon invited a bunch of musical guests to interpret selections from the landmark 1972 Rolling Stones album. Celebrated concert documentarian D.A. Pennebaker turned his lens on The National this past May for a webcast benefit concert to support the AIDS-fighting Red Hot organization. One of the show's many highlights came as leading man Matt Berenger 
fearlessly waded into the crowd of adoring Brooklyn hipsters in one of the band's best known songs, Mr. November. Remember that Oasis packed it in towards the end of 2009, and it looks like the lad rock mantle has been passed to fellow Brit band Kasabian, who kicked off the summer concert season at Germany's massive Rock em Ring Festival with a rowdy, crowd baiting version of their hit, Where Did All the Love Go? It was pretty well impossible to escape the sound of Somali-born rapper Kanon singing Waving Flag this summer, particularly after the song was chosen as the official anthem for the 2010 World Cup Soccer Championships in South Africa. year marked the third time that guitar god Eric Clapton called on some of his musical pals to join him in a benefit concert, the Crossroads Substance Abuse Center. talent on display at these events is nothing short of phenomenal, and we had a real hard time picking out a highlight, but eventually settled on this electrifying moment from Dear Mr. Fantasy. Another big concert webcast, also orchestrated by a well-known film director, was the Arcade Fire's Madison Square Garden show in early August. It was Terry Gilliam stepping in to call the shots for this one. And while the New York crowd seemed a little lethargic, the band, appropriately enough, were on fire. Here's a show that we really hope sees a DVD release next year. Or failing that, a full-fledged tour that brings the members of Buffalo Springfield to a much wider audience. Until that happens, we'll just have to get by on fan shot footage, like these clips shot off the Jumbotron at the only show the band gave in 2010. Regular viewers of the Vlog will recall, two female singers really caught our eye this year, Florence Welsh and Brandy Carlisle. Florence's crowd-levitating performance at Glastonbury in June was truly jaw-dropping. Brandy Carlisle's triumphant turn on the Austin City Limits stage remains a standout bit of music television.
Paul McCartney paid two separate visits to Washington this year to receive awards. In June, he won the Gershwin Prize for Popular Song. You might remember us playing a bit of Dave Grohl's tribute version of Band on the Run from the Library of Congress. Yeah, the night was forming as the desert world began to settle down. In the town they're searching for us everywhere, but we're nowhere to be found. Band on the Run. And this past month, he returned again to the Capitol to receive a Kennedy Center honor. Now, the closing moments of the ceremony were pretty spectacular. After Mavis Staples and James Taylor finished a duet on Let It Be, the curtain rose to reveal a full choir, and the house erupted into a sing-along version of Hey Jude. That's it for 2010. I'm Barnaby Marshall. We'll be back next week with a regular edition of Rock Peaks. Oh, no.